Nothing was more important to Jesus than the one person. No matter who that one was or where they came from. Through many years of ministry, Lakewood Church has discovered that there is no greater joy than loving and caring for God's people, one at a time. Join Pastor John and Dodie Osteen for the next hour as they make God's Word relevant to your life. When you're lost in a storm, there's a place where you can find the help you need. The hurt turns into healing, and you can change the life you lead. It's a place of faith that's bad. All of this noise, all the clapping, all the shouting is just because we're glad you have tuned in to be blessed by the television today. And I believe God is going to bless you because we teach the Word of God and we're here for you. Yes. And everybody said amen. amen. I want to remind you of a scripture that has meant so much to me through the years, but I want to read one above it. You know, I've said over and over, the day that we pray, the tide of the battle turns. In Psalm 56 in the, New, uh, in the Living Bible, it says, You have seen me tossing and turning through the night, Lord Jesus. Have you ever tossed and turned through the night because you couldn't sleep? You have collected all my tears. Have you ever cried at night when everybody else was asleep and you were crying, as a, a crying to the Lord and saying, God, where are you? Where are you? Come to me, Jesus. You know, he's there as close as the very breath that you breathe, but sometimes it doesn't seem like it. And you have preserved my tears in your bottle. You have recorded every one in your book. So, you know, the Bible says there will be no tears in heaven. But he's got all of our tears recorded in his book uh, here on earth, all the tears that we've cried. And then the ninth verse says, The very day I call for help, the tide of the battle turns. Yes. The one who has been tossing and turning and seeking God through the night, knowing that God is their only answer, the day that he calls out to God for help, then the battle turns. My enemies flee. The enemy of, of death flees. The enemy of finances yes. flees. The the enemy of wayward children, please, this one thing I know, God is for me. So if God is for you, who can be against you in the very day that you pray, the tide of the battle turns. Amen. Oh, my. Don't you do so good. And you people on television, oh, you may think she screams a little loud and and you know, the Bible says when God healed that, Jesus healed that, that crippled man, he went walking and leaping and praising God into the temple. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when Dodie is celebrating 16 years of being healed of cancer of the liver, I'll tell you, she has something to shout about. Yeah. And, and we're so glad that you tuned in to be with us today. And I believe that God's going to bless you with the Word of God. I want us to give the television audience another good hand clap and a shout. Would you do that? <laughs> Amen. Let's hold, let's hold up our Bibles and let's make our confession together. Wonderful to have a Bible. And yes. Say it like you've never said it before. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. never, never. I'll never be the same. Never In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And television audience, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 8. 
But what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Could I have an amen? amen? I'm going to quote to you our master text again, and surely everybody here knows it. Hebrews 11, 6, 6 says, for without faith it is impossible to please God. Now let me ask this television artist and you people here, do you want to please God? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. You know, even in our failure, we get up and say, God, forgive me, I, I want to please you. Our desire is to please him. So we need to realize that God has said himself. It is absolutely, totally, and completely, irrevocably, impossible to please him without faith. So it behooves us to talk about faith. And I have emphasized in this series of messages, pleasing God with your faith. Thank God for evangelists, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers who have special gifts. And there are special gifts. And we do need to pray for each other. But the ideal is that we should be so developed in our relationship to God and the promises of God that our own personal faith will work for us when we can't find anybody else to pray for us. Could I have a better amen? amen. In other words, you ought to be able to say, I could chase the devil off myself. You ought not to grab the phone and say, oh, pastor, pastor, help me. The devil's after me. No, you are a believer. Stand on your ground. Face the devil and chase him off yourself. Amen. Pleasing God with your own personal faith. God wants you to know him. You to come to him. You to have faith in him. Now there... There is a, the, the scripture that I wanted to emphasize to you in Romans is, for with the, with the heart man believeth. Faith is of the heart. It is with the heart man believeth. You do not need to turn to it, but 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here God tells you that you are a triune being. You are, are a spirit being. You have a soul and you live in a body. You are three parts. He said spirit, soul, and body. When you hear somebody say, I'm body, soul, and spirit, you know they don't have good teaching because it begins with the spirit. We are a spirit being. We have a soulish area and we live in a body. With our body, we contact the physical world. With our soul, we contact the mental and intellectual world. It is only with our spirit that we contact God and the spiritual realm. That's the reason we need to emphasize God is not a man. God is not spirit. He is a spirit, a real personality. And when God wants to talk to you, he will talk to you in your spirit and not in your mind. Faith is in the heart. Faith does not come. You cannot believe God with your body. You cannot believe God with your carnal mind. The Word of God must be in your heart. You must believe God from the deepest core. What do we mean by heart? That is the core. 
heart of an apple is the core. The deepest part is the core. That's what we're talking about. The deepest part of us is our spirit. And God wants us to know it is with that inner man that we believe him. God wants us to know faith is of the heart. You are spirit, you are soul, and you are body. Now, when God saves you, and I, I trust that you are saved out there. Just because you're a church member doesn't mean you're saved. Just because you've been baptized doesn't mean you're saved. Just because you talk good doesn't mean you're saved. Just because you live a good moral life doesn't mean you're saved. You must be born again. And thank God for the new birth. But now let me, let me emphasize to you, and it'll help you a lot if you listen to me. When God gives you the mighty work of salvation, his work is not in your body. His work is not in your soulish or intellectual realm. His work is in your spirit. That part of God, that part of man that God gives the new birth to is not the body, not the mind, but of the spirit. Our inner man is born again. And some people get confused because after they get born again, their body wants to do things they ought not to do. And their mind thinks crazy thoughts. Could I have an amen? amen. Could I have a better amen? amen? Don't look so innocent, shout amen. amen. Oh yes, you see, God, God, God recreates the spirit. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature in your spirit. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. But listen, God leaves this business of your mind and your body up to you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, Romans 12, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, your body, even after you're saved, will want to do things it ought not to do. That's why Paul said, I keep my body under. Your mind will have thoughts it ought not to have. So you need to renew your mind in the Word of God. And, uh, and then when your mind is renewed in the Word of God and your spirit has the ascendancy and the power, you will be able to control your body. No, no, you're not going to obey that body. That body will want com to commit fornication. That body will want co to commit adultery. That body will want to gorge itself on enchiladas, <laughs> tamales, chalupas, <laughs> coconut pie, <laughs> banana pudding. And if you mix that all together, you're going to need prayer. Your body will crave things, but you got to you got to realize your body's not saved yet. And your your mind is not saved yet. The part that God worked on was in your was in your in your in your spirit. In your spirit, see, you are a spirit and you live in that body. I tell this story often here. I like to tell my stories over again. But you know, we are living in our body. And this little boy named Johnny. I don't know why they named Johnny. I don't know why they call tallest Johns. Why can't they call them Jims? Why do they have to pick out my name to call toilets? Thought I'd wake you up. But this little boy is named Johnny, and he wanted to stand up in church. His mother said, sit down, Johnny. And he wouldn't sit down. She said, sit down, Johnny. He frowned and he said, I'm not sitting down. She said, I said, sit down, Johnny. He said, I'm not sitting down. She got up, stood up, way up above him, put her hand on his head and pushed him down and held him there. He looked up and he said, I may be standing, I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. <laughs> See, there is an inside man.
an inside woman and the devil may have knocked you down. You can say, I may be down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. Amen. I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are a spirit. We contact God with our spirit. God speaks to our spirit. God does not speak to your mind. But now faith, if you're going to have faith in God, it's not going to come out of your head. It's not going to come out of your, how your body feels. It's going to come out of what your, your spirit has learned from the Word of God. It says, uh, but the Word is nigh thee. That is the word of faith, which we preached. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. See, it can be two places, in your heart and in your mouth. The word of faith, what God says, needs to get beyond your mind into your heart. Faith is of the heart. You do not believe God with your body. Your body will tell you you're going to go crazy, but God says you're going to have the mind of Christ. Amen. You do not believe God with your physical five senses. You do not believe God with your mind. You believe God with your heart, with your heart. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Now, bread will keep your physical body alive. But you are more than a physical body. You're a spirit man or woman. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live. Physical food is for the physical body. Intellectual food is for the mind. The only way you can nourish your spirit is on the Word of God because Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Spirit need spirit food. That's why it is so important, church, in these dark, troublous, turbulent days, when the world does not see any answer to all the multitudinous problems that are out there, it is so important for us to have inside information. That's the reason we need to stay in the Word of God. I would say this, don't let a day go by but what you feed your spirit on the Word of God. Meditate on what God says about your situation. Let it get beyond your mind, down in your spirit. Let, you, let your spirit be so convinced that God wants you well and strong and healthy and out of trouble and, and delivered that the devil couldn't beat you out, out of it with a ball bat. I'll tell you, if it beat you to a greasy spot, the greasy spot would say, God said it, and I believe it, and it's true. <laughs> Amen. Learn to read your Bible every day. I've been living for Jesus ever since 1939. Don't try to figure it up. I'm 76 years old, young. <laughs> Glory be to God, I feel like I'm 39. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. And I don't go by what my body says, I go by what God says. And he said, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Glory be to God. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I've got nations, I've got nations to conquer. I'm going to climb the Himalayan mountains, go down the Amazon River. I'm going to preach the gospel around the world. Yeah. 
Well, you, you know, some doctors might examine me and say, well, you, no, no, no way, no way, Jose. You know, they could have done the same thing with Sarah and Abraham. No way you're going to have a baby at 90 years old. I tell you, when God says have a baby, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> and when God says you're going to live and preach into your 90s, you're going to do it. Yeah. When God said it, he's going to bring it to pass. Yeah. Listen, but no word of God shall be void of power. Now the angel said to Mary, you're going to have a child without knowing a man. She said, how can this be? He said, the Holy Ghost. We got the same Holy Ghost that overshadowed Mary. Thank God, thank God, thank God. When God said live, you can live without a heart. When God said live, you can live without arteries. When God says live, you can live without kidneys. When God says live, you can live without a brain. When God says live, you'll live. Hallelujah. so happy about it. You see, when you got it in your heart, your mind can tell you everything wrong is wrong about it, but your heart can sing. Yeah. Faith is of the heart. That's the reason you need to feed your spirit. Every day, read the Word of God every day. Meditate in the Word of God every day. Nobody can make you do it. Meditate in the Word of God. So you go to a doctor and he says, take medication three times a day, two times a day. So would you do it? Oh, you watch it and you do, you do it, you do it. Well, why don't you do as much for God as you do for a doctor? Meditate therein day and night. And then, uh, knowing these coming days, I don't want to fuss in, but I'm so glad for thousands here. And I, I want to say this in a kind, sweet way. Uh, I wish you'd train yourself to come to church more than one time a week. I give my life. I've given my life. Dodie and I and our family have given our life. When I came here, I was a young man. I'm still young at heart. And I labor in the Word. You ought to make yourself get up and come. You ought to make yourself be under the sound of the Word of God. You ought to make yourself be here. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And you ought to get in a good church. There's lots of good churches. This is not the only good church. Lots of good churches. But get one that teaches the Word of God. Don't get one that tells you God makes you sick. Don't get one that tells you speaking in tongues is of the devil. Don't get in one that says healing has passed away. Oh, no, get out, get out, get out quick. Find another good church, another church someplace else that preaches the Word of God. So not only read the words yourself, Meditate on it yourself, but be taught and trained and get with a company of people who will talk faith to you. Get your heart full of the Word of God. And let your heart sing and praise God and believe. While your mind is full of doubt, your heart can be full of faith. It is with your heart you believe God. Deep on the inside of you, you know that Jesus told you the truth. And you have been convinced that God is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. You are thoroughly convinced he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your healer. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, your provider. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, your peace. He is the great God who can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And he is well able to do it for us. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. And please, nobody leaving the building. You know, it's such a joy to preach the Word of God to you. As I said, I'm a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. My business is to teach you and to train you how to be a strong Christian. And I believe today that you found some things that will help you understand how to overcome your body and overcome your mind and live out of your spirit. We're so glad that you tuned in today. But you know, the greatest act of faith is when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. When you 
confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. So why don't you just simply pray this simple prayer and, and, and believe God's word as you do it. Say today out loud, wherever you are on television, say, I confess with my mouth right now I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because I have said this and I believe this in my heart, I say what God says. I am now saved. Jesus is now my Lord. And I'm on my way to heaven. My sins are gone, gone and washed away in the blood of Jesus. And thank God I belong to God. He's more than my God. He is my heavenly Father. Now, don't be ashamed. Don't act like it didn't happen. Find somebody and tell them, Jesus is my Lord. If we don't see you, see you here, we'll see you in heaven.